This time on Ask Rad Rat, we're talking about Dark Slides, we're talking about Tony Hawk remake idea, we're talking about mall grabs, and we're talking about skate teams. Let's do it. Welcome back to Rad Rat Video, a channel where you can learn new things about skateboarding, or at least see my opinion on them and see me play weird old games and torture myself. Today we're answering some of your questions though, like this first one from BWBYverse, who says, why Rodney Mullen do dark slides with his feet on the nose and tail? So there's two different ways to do a dark slide, I guess three, sort of. So the standard way or the, the Mullen way is one foot on the nose, one foot on the tail. The other way is the Jeff Rowley way. He did one in, uh, it's one of the flip videos. I I tried to figure out which one it was. I thought, I, I couldn't find it, but I know he did it. He did it on a picnic table. But that's on one foot on the tail and one foot in the middle. Technically, you could do one foot in the middle and one foot on the nose, but I think you'd probably just call that the same thing. But anyway, so uh, why does Mullen do them with a foot on the nose and a foot on the tail? I think it's because it's more technically difficult. You know, like it's more precise to land on the nose, to get over the truck and land on the nose is harder than just being somewhere in the middle. And so therefore it's like, it feels like the right way to do it. It's sort of like if there's an obvious easy way and an obvious harder way, you can't really do the easier way. You know, like if you're skating some stairs at an angle and this side has three stairs and this side has four, you can't ollie the three and show the four in the background because it'll be obvious that you picked the easier way. Like you never see on a quarter pipe, you never see a 5-0 back to regular. You always see it to fakey because it's harder and you can't be the guy who's making the easier choice. So that's kind of my my theory. I'm not sure. Um, I have done both. I don't have a lot of footage. I, I can only think of one that I filmed where I did like a board transfer into a dark slide. Um, and I think the Rowley version is significantly easier to me because like when you land it, uh, to flip out of it, you do a pressure flip. And it's easier when your feet are close because you can shift your weight to the tail quicker and pop it and kind of get that flip going. If you're all the way over here, you know, with your foot on the nose and you got to transfer all the way back and try to pop it, it's just, it it's a little bit tougher. It's hard to get that quick snap. The board just wants to flop over slightly. So I've always felt like it was a little bit harder to land a standard dark slide. So in my opinion, harder to get into um, it's really hard to like not trip over the wheel and harder to land. So you might as well do it the cool way. Um, Johnny Geiger recently did a, a video not too long ago, probably a month and a half or two months by now where he, he did both, um, like did them back to back in a day to figure out which one he liked more. And he thought that the standard way, the Rodney Mullen way was easier, but I think that might be because he learned that way first and he just has more like experience doing it. I'm not sure, but yeah, I would expect it was because Mullen thought it maybe looked better and was harder. But uh, yeah, if you want to try both, decide for yourself. I don't know. The next question is from no one at all, or no one at all, who says, Hi, Radical Rat. Thank you for answering my poo-poo question made for a hilarious video. I thought so too. Okay. So he's talking about, I think each Tony Hawk game up to Proving Ground brought something new to the table. And by American Wasteland and Proving Ground, a lot of tricks were added to the control scheme. A lot of people complained about the game having too much cramped into it, like me. Lots of pointless mechanics, and although there were a lot of pointless stuff like driving, spray painting, and, and riding a bull, I think that when they added more tricks, this was actually a good thing. I think more tricks you can do in a skate game, the better. In Tony Hawk HD, Tony Hawk 5, people wondered why you could barely do anything. So the question is, do you think a Tony Hawk game with its classic controls, but with every trick that's ever been added still in the game would make for a good game? So no pointless stuff. Just classic controls with the most tricks packed into a skate game, including flat land, not as spins, burt slides, pressure flips, acid drops, one foot grinds, more in-depth in create a trick, and even a fixed nail the trick mode where nothing gets canceled out. All the specials and even slow-mo with more scaled down physics and realistic motion capture tricks and current gen hardware. Okay, so I'm one of the guys that complains about all this stuff being jammed in, in the games, and I don't think it makes it better. Like, I get where you're coming from. More is more. You can choose to not use those tricks if you want, but a lot of this stuff is just pointless, and I don't have a good time with it, and it can you can trigger stuff on accident sometimes, you know? So, like, driving cars. 
I know you didn't count that, but driving cars feels terrible, and it's a big part of some of the the later games. Um, like the whole car, like you know, you come to a turn and it just kind of slides in place, like all four tires slide, and you go over there. It feels really weird. It's awkward and it's clumsy. If I wanted to play a racing game, I'd play a racing game. If I wanted to play like uh, open world driving game, I'd play like Grand Theft Auto or something. It doesn't make sense to have that in a Tony Hawk game. The climbing and stuff, I get keeping that in, but only for, you know, climb up this building because there's a skate park on the top. You can't really get there otherwise, although they could do the thing that they used to do, which was just having the doors open and it's black and you go in and you teleport to the top. Just do that. You know, like there's really no need for the climbing. All the challenges involving climbing, all of the run after this and climb up here and then line up and grab and jump and grab onto the banner and shimmy over. That stuff was really hard because it played terrible. <laughs> Could you fix it and make it more fun? Sure. But why not stick to skateboarding and save that stuff for the Tomb Raider series, you know, where it actually works? So I, I don't think that that really is needed, although I wouldn't complain if it was there, as long as it wasn't like a major feature in the game. Uh, not as spins are kind of pointless. When do you ever do one if the game doesn't tell you to? Um, because like they don't really have any role in a combo because you, you do one and you jump off and you land with pr practically no speed. So you can't like do it in a, like you can end a combo on one if you just so happen to land by one, but why bother? Uh, the nail the trick I could see if it could get fixed up, but it didn't work very well. Like, if you did a kickflip and a shove it at the same time, the board didn't do a 360 flip. It would just, like, do this. And it looked stupid. And it didn't make any sense, and it wasn't a real trick. If you updated the physics, made it work like Skater XL or something like that, where you could do normal tricks, but they would always look a little bit different depending on the exact angle, I guess you could put that back in. The create a special trick, that was pointless. Um, it was just, like put a couple of tricks on a timeline and then maybe at, at a spin and that's it. So you could do like a kickflip melon, but you could just do a kickflip melon. Like I just, I didn't, I didn't like that at all. I didn't, I didn't think that added anything to the game. So like having all this complicated stuff just being jammed in there, um, isn't really a problem if you're just doing free skate, but if there's actually a story mode, it has to teach you all this stuff and it's repetitive and it's boring. I played Tony Hawk's American skate land, yeah, American Skateland recently, right here, is on the DS. And that is obviously a lot more simple than the console version. But even then, you're still doing tutorials on the last level because there's just so much stuff that doesn't have time for you to learn on your own. There's stuff that you didn't learn too that's in there, like the Burt Slides. They never show you how to do those, but you can just do them. Um, yeah, so I guess that's the thing. If they wanted to keep it in there, um, but just not have it be, be part of the story mode, I'd be okay with it. Uh, pressure flips, I don't want though. Because I like to do stuff off the nose. I like to do uh, Nolly and Fakie a lot in Tony Hawk games. But you have to tap it twice to get into Nolly now because there's a pressure stance in the middle. I don't like that. Take that out for sure. Um, but yeah, I see where you're coming from. But for me, the ideal new game, there's two options I would accept. One would be a Tony Hawk 3B where it would be pretty much the same game. You can add in spine transfers. I thought that was a useful thing. Add in spine transfers, add in, you know, some of the more advanced, like, you know, 360 shove it's triple flips, stuff like that, where you just, like, you know, uh, hip flip twice. I think that was fine. Maybe the Tony Hawk 4 engine, but I don't like the open world as much. Make Tony Hawk 3 in the Tony Hawk 4 engine. New levels, new goals. That's it. That would be great. I would really like that. You can beat those games pretty quick, but if you have enough skaters in it, you have enough unlockable stuff, you got some special secret stages that you unlock, just like they did back in the day, I would think that was really good. I think a more reasonable thing that might be more likely to happen, um, and I'd also be fine with, is a Thug 3. But it would have to really minimize the walking and the climbing and the driving and the, you're in a tank now and oh, you're on a... Segway that has a flaming motor on it that shoots out black smoke and you can only do backflips. I don't want any of that stuff. Um, so yeah, like a skating focused, boil down the essential best in the Thug series and make a new story. That'd be okay too. I think I could be okay with that. Okay, let's move on though. The next question is from Yerky, who says, what is so wrong with the mall grab? 
This refers to people that carry their board by the trucks instead of the deck. Why do other skaters look down on this? It does not make sense. What is your opinion? I've talked about this before. If you search the channel, I'm sure you'll find it. I did an in-depth research video on where the term came from and all that kind of stuff. But like, I I picked this question because I was recently talking to someone on, on Patreon and they were saying like, you know, I got my senior picture taken with a skateboard. And I was thinking, you know what? So did I. And I was doing a mall grab in it because the term didn't exist yet. No one was making fun of people for holding their board in a certain way yet. So I'm standing there. I've got a board right next to me. I'm standing there and like, I'm just holding on to the truck. Just stand there like this, you know, taking my picture for senior picture. And I, I skated every day, pretty much. I was a legit skater as much as anyone was. And that's just how I carried the board. And there was a good reason for it. So if you're carrying the board straight up, and you walk around, you're not going to hit anything. If you're holding your board this way, you walk around, you turn, you knock stuff out. You know, if you're walking indoors and you turn this way, the board behind you knocks something off a counter or whatever. Like it just made more sense to hold it straight up. And so that's what I did. And it became like the sign of posers all around the world. And I don't think there's any real, there's no real benefit to it, but I do think about it when I go to skate parks now. So if I'm just going outside, cause I have my little freestyle pad out there, I gotta carry my board over there cause it's all grass in the middle. I probably mall grab it at least half the time. I don't really think about it. But if I go to a skate park, I'm always going like, okay, hold on. I'm like, let's do this right. I'm gonna grab it. I'm gonna grab the board like this. And yes, it's gonna make my fingers hurt if I have to hold it for too long or maybe I'll hold it by the graphic or, or whatever. But if I got, my phone or a camera or a bottle of water or something, you know, like, I don't know, man. It's stupid. If you don't want to be laughed at, don't do it, but there's no good reason for it. Okay. Last question is from Josh who says, what are your thoughts on FA? I saw in one of your old videos, you didn't know what hockey was, but now that that Tyshawn Jones won skater of the year, a few other FA guys have been in the skater of the year conversation. Have you gotten into that team at all? I'll be honest with you, I couldn't care less about teams. I'm fans of individual skaters. And like what team they're on and who's giving them product doesn't really affect me that much. The only way it would is if I really like everybody on a certain team and some new name pops up on there. I might check out their you know, their new video that welcomes them to the the team or whatever. But for the most part like I could be a fan of this guy or this girl and not even know what sponsors they're on because I don't care. I like to watch them skate. Um, and that's really all there is to it. So being the fan of a certain skate team doesn't really, doesn't really fit for me. That's not something that I, I do. I'm, I wouldn't say I've ever considered myself the fan of a certain team. Uh, you know, it's not basketball. I'm not going to go out wearing a Jersey that says like whatever brand on it. It's just like, it just doesn't make sense to me. So, um, I'm fans of individuals and of individual skating and I don't shop based on the brand anyway. What I do when I go buy a new deck is I'll go to a skate shop. I will look for boards in my size and I'll pick one that I like the design of from a brand that I recognize. I don't want it to be some weird offshoot, you know, some weird, you know, non skater brand that's going to fall apart. And if the board breaks in a second, I probably won't buy a second one. Um, and that's about it. I like to experiment. I like to try new things. I'm not focused on buying one thing over and over and over. The only brand I don't like, and I know this, they're all kind of the same wood. A lot of these brands is girl bought a girl in like 2007 or something like that. I broke it in my first session and I was, uh, you know, I was a kid. I was just out of high school. I think I just started college. I didn't have a job. Um, it sucks to lose like 55 or 60 bucks. I don't know. Cause I probably had it shipped. I don't know, whatever, but it just immediately broke on my first session. I was so upset. Um, so I haven't bought a girl ever since then. I'm sure they're fine. I know, but, um, yeah, so I will buy a board that is the size that I want and that's about it. Um, so I'm, I don't consider myself the fan of a certain brand. Um, I'm sure they're great. Again, I, I have no issue with them. I don't have an issue with any of the brands that you're talking about. 
I just don't care. And that's really all there is to it. So that's it for now. If you have any questions, go to RadRatVideo.com and submit them right on the homepage right there. You can also tap my logo in the middle of the screen to subscribe to make sure you don't miss the next video in this series and all the other weird stuff that I do. And YouTube will give you some more examples of the stuff that I do over there. Make sure you hit the like button. Do all that YouTube stuff to keep me going, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.